Family Theater presents Gene Crane, Dale Robertson, Maureen O'Sullivan, and Margaret Sheridan. The Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Heart Also Sees, starring Gene Crane, Dale Robertson, and Margaret Sheridan. To introduce the program, here is your hostess, Maureen O'Sullivan. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Heart Also Sees, starring Jeannie Crane as Jane, Dale Robertson as Paul, and Margaret Sheridan as Eve. Okay, just because this is my day to cook, don't rub it in. How'd the morning go? Slow. Or is it slowly? I don't know. Anyway, the only thing good about that filing department is a half day off on Saturday. What's for lunch? Well, if you really want to know, company. Company? Well, who is she? Anybody I know? She is a he. No. No, Eve, you said you weren't going to do that anymore when I'm here. Oh, Jane, you can't go on avoiding people forever. Eve, let's not go over all that again. If you'd only let me know, I could have eaten out somewhere. Oh, I suppose it still isn't too late. But I've told him you were going to be here, Jane. You shouldn't have. You know our agreement. But this is different. He knows you. Knows me? Well, has he been here before? No, but he... Has he seen me? No, he hasn't seen you, Jane, but he knows all about you. It's Paul Norman, the boy I grew up with in my hometown. You know, the one who types his letters. Oh, then he hasn't seen me. Well, I've told him all about you in my letters, Jane. He's coming here to take a library job. He'll be just like all the others, Eve. And I couldn't take that again. Oh, not Paul, Jane. I think you'll find him very nice. Oh, they're all polite enough. But it's in their eyes what they think of me when they see me. It's in their voices, too. Oh, you only imagine that. I don't imagine what I've seen for myself, Eve. I'm nothing any man wants to look at, and you know it. Men want their girls to be pretty. You think this Paul Norman is an exception? Well, I don't, that's all. As far as I'm concerned, our little understanding still goes. All right, Jane. I made a mistake. But what can I do about it? Can't you go out with him somewhere? Well, I hardly think I can do that now. I've invited him for lunch, and besides, he'd like to meet you. He said so. I'm not going through that again, Eve. You two have your lunch, and then why don't you suggest going to a, a movie or something? I'll come back afterward. I don't think he'd want to go to a movie. You see, Jane, Paul is blind. But, but you said he was going to take a library job. How, how can he when he... He's going to work in the Braille Library at the college. Oh, I see. I'm sorry I made such a fuss, Eve. I'll stay, of course. Anybody would think you two had known each other since the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you we started it? Well, if a revolution means a change in things, I think you did at that. Eve? Look, you two go ahead and make with the words. I'll go into the kitchen and clean up these dishes. No, let me go, Eve, please. You cooked the lunch. Well, you ate it, and that's heroism enough for one day. If I get tired of the dishes, I'll just break them up and throw them away. <laughs> uh, she's a good kid. We used to make mud pies together. Was that all there was to it, Paul? Oh, no. Well, then we threw them at each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I get for asking something that's really none of my business. If you mean what I think you do, Jane, Eve and I have never had any brothers or sisters, and we just sort of adopted each other. I didn't mean to ask anything like that, Paul, but I'm glad you told me. You know, Jane, what Eve said about our talking like we had known each other a long time, it does seem like that. To you too, Paul. Yeah. Tomorrow's Sunday. The park is nice on Sunday. Would you like to go walking with me? Oh, I'd love to. It's been so long since I've been there. We can see that... <gasps> see? Of course, Jane. I don't need eyes to see lots of things in the park. And we'll see them together. 
tomorrow. Now you look around you, Jane, and see whether I'm right. From this bench, I see a, I see a street about a hundred yards to our left, and a bus goes by about every twelve minutes. <laughs> and between us and the street is a small dog. What color? Now you're trying to make it tough. Well, he's, he's white with black spots. Oh, I got you that time. He's brown. <laughs> well, I get half on that. And right near us is a tree that has red berries on it. Or ought to have if it's a season for red berries. <laughs> what kind of talk is that? I smell a pepper tree, silly. Why, why, you're right. I hadn't even seen it. And over our left shoulder's a bright sun. And, and the sky is blue. There are lazy white clouds up above us. Right again. And beside me there's someone very sweet, whose eyes are bluer than the summer sky. That's beautiful, Paul, but I'm sorry. I only wish I were like that. Are you telling me I can't see, Jane? Oh, no, Paul, but you just... I didn't say enough. But poets sometimes can't find the words either. I can prove it. There's a sonnet. It starts... Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely. Lovely? No, Paul. I'm afraid I'm not exactly what you read about in your library. I knew you'd be lovely when my mother read Eve's letters to me. When she told me about you and the things you do. Now I know it for myself. Oh, Paul? I've known what you look like, Jane, ever since I first heard you speak. Well, if, if you want to think so, Paul. I know, Jane. And when I see you, you'll be just as I picture you. You want to bet on it? When... when you... what, Paul? When I see you. It'll be pretty soon now. Didn't Eve tell you? No. No, Eve didn't tell me. Well, I've been this way only about three months. I came back from Korea in May. It was a gun blast. There have been two operations already, and, well, the next one will do it. I'm having it done here next week. That means then that you'll... you'll see after that? You don't sound very happy about it. Oh, that isn't it. I... Of course I'm happy for you. I... I... Jane, you aren't here with me just because you felt sorry for me. Because I... Oh, no, Paul, you mustn't say that. Or you mustn't even think of it. Then what is it? Why did my saying I was going to see again make such a difference to you? Oh, it's... nothing we can talk about. Paul, I think I'd like to go home now. But we have half a day ahead of us yet. No, no, I'd like to go home now, Paul. Please... I'd just like to go home now. Jane, what are you trying to do to yourself and Paul? For two weeks you've been putting him off, making excuses every time he calls. Eve, you should have told me he was going to see again. Well, I thought you knew it was in his letters. I thought I told you. No, I'm sure you didn't. Well, anyway, you can't go on acting like this. And I can't go on being with him, letting us mean something to each other, and then have him see me as I am. I couldn't bear to have him look at me with disappointment. Not him. You love Paul, don't you, Jane? Yes, I love him. But I'd rather not ever see him again than... than well, then to listen to me. He's there at the hospital... They've already taken the bandages off, and he can have visitors. There's only one person he wants to see, and that's you. Surely you aren't going to let him down. You can't. But Eve, try to understand. He thinks of me as something that I'm not. He, he said he pictured me as lovely. That's a laugh, isn't it? Hey, wait a minute. He said he pictured you as lovely, did he? Well, little chum, you're going to be lovely till it hurts. What on earth are you talking when about? When I get through with you, you'll be lucky if men even let you get to the hospital. Eve, will you please tell me Let's what this see. is all about? What time is it? We can make it. Come on, there's no time for questions, and don't forget your purse. But Eve, I... Maybe I... Rome wasn't built in a day, sister, but you're about to see one of the wonders of the world built in one morning. You're going to walk into that hospital looking like a princess. And the first time he sees you, well, you just wait. I beg your pardon, nurse. Can you tell me where Mr. Norman's room is? Certainly. It's that one right there. Oh, thank you. You must be Jane. Yes. Oh, he's done nothing but ask for you. I'm glad you're here. How... how is he? No, he's feeling fine. 
He's sitting in his chair, now facing the window. I think he's been watching for you, but he can't see the walk from here. Then he... he can see? As well as ever. He'll probably be leaving today as soon as the doctor has seen him. Shall I tell him you're here? No. Thank you. I'll, I'll just go right on in. Have you seen her yet, nurse? Maybe they sent her to the wrong floor. Could you call downstairs or something? It's Jane, Paul. Jane! Don't turn around, Paul. Let me just stand behind your chair for a moment first, Paul. I know it's been long. It's been long for me, too. I was so foolish, Paul. I'm sorry. Well, you're here now. That's all that matters. Come around in front of me so I can see you. All right, Paul. Well, well, it's good to see you after all this time, Jane. Is it, Paul? You... Well, that's quite a dress. How's Eve? Did she come with you? No, she... She wanted me to come alone. But she'll be seeing you soon, she said. Don't you want to sit down? Thank you. I guess it's good to be seeing again, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, I'd kind of forgotten what it was like. I'm glad for you, Paul. That Thanks. everything I... I mean, things have turned out right for you. Thanks. I, I don't think I ought to stay too long. You should rest, and Eva want to know how you are. And everything. As you can tell her, I'll be leaving the hospital today. All right. I, uh... I think I'd better be going now, Paul. Thanks for coming, Jane. Very thoughtful of you. And I'll be dropping around soon. Oh, and Jane... Do you mind snapping off the light switch there by the door? Thanks a lot. Take care of yourself, Paul. Sure. Thanks. I thought you were coming through that door without opening it. What would it matter if I did? Hey, what's gotten into you? Sit down and relax, will you? All right. Did you see Paul? Yes, I saw Paul, and he saw me, too. Oh, what in the world happened to make you like this? He saw me. That's what happened. He looked at me. What always happens when they look at me? He didn't like what he saw, that's all. That's his privilege, isn't it? Oh, I don't understand, Jane, but whatever it was, it... Oh, it must have been a mistake. Mistake? Yes, it was a mistake. It was a mistake ever to think that beauty parlors and pretty clothes could make me look attractive to him. It just isn't there, oh, Eve. Jane. Not even a magician could bring it out if it isn't there. The next time you want to make a princess, Eve, you'd better start with better material. Oh, Jane, dear. Oh, it doesn't matter. It couldn't help happening. It isn't your fault. Only this time it had to be Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Really, I am, Jane. Oh, let's not talk about it anymore. You were only trying to help me, I know. It's no use, Eve. It's just no use. Now, if you'll excuse me. Jane, Paul phoned a few minutes after you left the hospital. He wants to talk to you. He's coming over. Well, that's, that's nice of him. I suppose he'd like to say he's sorry. I don't know. He didn't tell me any more than that. Just that he was leaving right away to come to see you and talk to you. I don't think that'll be necessary, Eve. Everything about him as he saw me for the first time told me all I want to know. Words aren't going to help now. But you'll give him a chance to explain, won't you? Explain what? Would you want to listen to polite words spoken out of kindness, sympathy? Because he realizes now that his eyes and the tone of his voice told the truth. No, Eve. I'm going out now. When Paul comes, I, I won't be here. Jane, don't do this. He wanted to see me. Well, he did. He won't again. Do you hear me, Eve? He never will again. <laughs> But what'd she say, Eve? Just what I told you, Paul. She simply wasn't going to be here. Do you know where she went? I wouldn't have the slightest idea. But if I know Jane, she won't be back as long as there's any chance that you're still here. Sorry to be so subtle about it, but I'm afraid that's it. I guess I've got it coming. I feel rotten about it, Eve, but I just couldn't say anything. She was so, so different from what I expected. I couldn't help showing it, I suppose. But after she had gone, I got to thinking it isn't so much how she looks... That's not what's important. Do you understand that? Oh, I'm not sure I understand anything, Paul. I'm thinking of taking a walk around the block and talking to myself. Who's this? Who's who? 
This picture. The girl. Who is it? What am I supposed to know? Oh, it's just Jane, that's all. This is Jane? Don't tell me you don't recognize her. But this isn't the girl I saw, Eve. How long since she's looked like this? Until this morning, Paul. Until she tried to do something about it for you. But she wasn't a bit like this. She looked artificial and affected. Well, the paint was an inch thick, and that dress. I hadn't thought of it that way at all. She sounded so natural, so simple. Like this picture. Do you mean she did all that to, to try to please me? Well, it wasn't her idea. It was mine. Yours? Well, it seemed like a good idea. Now I'm beginning to understand a few things. Eve, are you sure you don't know where she went? Think. Didn't she say anything at all? Only that she wouldn't be here when you came. But where could she go? Where could I go if... Wait. I think I know where I'd go. Maybe that's where James went. I'm going to go now and see. Well, go to it, mister. I'm going to look for someone, Eve, someone I've never even seen before. I beg your pardon, miss. Have you seen a small dog with black and white spots? No, that's right, it was brown. Paul. Hello, Jane. Oh, Paul, why did you come here? Well, I just wanted to find out if what I see in the park is really the way I thought I saw it. I... I was just leaving. If you'll excuse me, I... No, wait, Jane. Please, I can't talk to you. Goodbye, Paul. Jane, wait. Let me take you back to your apartment. Can't you see? It's going to rain. You'll get drenched if you stay here. I can take care of myself. Thank you. I wish you wouldn't follow me. Look at me. I'm soaking wet. My hair and my dress. Just look. I am looking, Jane. And I'm glad you decided to stop running away from me. Well, I had to get undercover, didn't I? Do you know where you are? Well, of course I know where I am. Where are you? Under a tree. Anyone can see that. Under what tree? Under a... a pepper tree. Not just a pepper tree. The pepper tree. The one we saw together when we were here the last time. Oh, Paul, do you have to see me this way? I'm just soaked after running in that rain. <laughs> I'm afraid your face is still running. Have, have you got a handkerchief? Well, yeah, here you are. Oh, maybe you can see where to wipe it better than I can. Sure. Let me have your handkerchief. And don't try to turn away. Hold your face still. You know, I like you better this way. With my face in streaks? But it isn't now. It looks fresh and clean. Just like a little kid after she scrubbed off the dirt. Oh, but look at my hair. Your hair? It has the lust of the rain put in it. Oh, Paul, you can't mean you... Well, look, the sun's coming out again. Sure enough it is. And here's our bench, Jane. Remember? Yes. This is the first time I've really seen the park with my eyes. Won't you see it with me? From our bench here? You really want me to? Wouldn't be the same without you. For a minute, then. See? It's just as I saw it, Jane. Not just a pepper tree, but... Well, there's a street the buses run on, about a hundred yards to our left. And the sun. It's just as it was then, over our left shoulder. And the sky? It's blue. With those white billowy clouds I could feel were there. And you're just as I saw you, Jane. Please, Paul. You don't need to feel you have to say anything to... It wasn't you at all who came to me this morning. That wasn't you... Eve told me what you did and why. Eve told you? Yes. You did that only to please me, so as not to disappoint me. <laughs> and all the time I'd been picturing you as you really are, as I see you now. Oh, Paul, you, you can't mean that. I mean exactly that, Jane. This is the you that I saw when we sat here together that first time, as you spoke to me. And then, as I dreamed of you now. Oh, Paul. I saw you with a charm that nobody can put on, Jane. The loveliness that was you all the time. Oh, I wanted so much to please you. Look at me, Jane. Your eyes do have the blue of the sky in them. The soft, warm blue. Just as I saw them. But remember what the sonnet says. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Oh, Paul. No, Jane, darling. You're lovelier than that to me. 
Oh, I've been so foolish, Paul. I thought I knew. I thought I could see what you wanted to make you happy. It's funny, isn't it? All along, I was the one who was blind, and you were the one who could see. Maureen O'Sullivan again. What is your favorite word in the English tongue? Of course, many of you will say your favorite word is mother. Others will choose home. I'm sure still others will declare that the most powerful word in the language is peace. Each of these words is beautiful indeed, but there's another word that appears again and again on every list. The word is prayer. Here too is a strikingly beautiful word, Beautiful not only in its soft syllables, but in the rich train of thought that it provokes. And note how the word prayer is linked closely with the other favorites. It's linked to mother, for it is she who first teaches us to pray. It is linked to home, for the home is the first classroom of prayer. And it is linked by an equally powerful link to peace, for peace is the fruit of prayer among men of good will. These favorite words put us all in mind of another word, family. It is family prayer that brings the family to God to ask his help and his blessings. Yes, it is family prayer that brings unity and happiness to the home. For the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Heart Also Sees, starring Jean Crane, Dale Robertson, and Margaret Sheridan. Maureen O'Sullivan was your hostess. Loney Blackman was also heard in tonight's play. The script was written by Jean Emmett Clark, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Cliff with Stephen McNally and Charles Ruggles. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.